folks, Kevin Noe here from Fight Designer LLC with another PewTube. It's been a while. That's just the way things go. I'm busy. I don't get paid for this. I don't get sponsorship or anything. So, you know, I do what I can and when I can't, oh well. I do want to have a, a quick shout out to Diary of a Screen Actor, which interviewed me the other day, which uh, may send some traffic this way, which is part of why I was like, you know, I should put up another one. So that's part of why we're here today. But one of the other things I want to talk about today is revolvers. Now, yeah, I should have gone on this whole thing about rust when that happened, and I was just too busy, it didn't happen. Uh, I might touch on that again later. But one thing I do want to talk about today is a shift in blank firing revolvers and their availability in this country and some of the jams and issues that can come up. So, with no further ado, we're going to be talking about the Zaraki R1 and R2 revolvers that are blank firing and comparing those to some of the other models and talking about blanks. Here we go. All right, so first off, one of the issues with blank guns is that most of them are imported from other countries. I think all of them are, actually. I don't know if there's anybody still making US-made blank guns. Traditions, I don't even know where they were based, but they kind of get phased out. Um, but they made, uh, they made starter pistols for a while. We're kind of crap. Um, and one of the companies that's been big lately is Zoraki. And then for the most part, I like them. Um, I think the guns are pretty well made. They're pretty solid. Uh, most of them are, are available front venting only, which may or may not be what you want, especially if you're doing live theater. Sometimes a top venting option is nice. Um, but they have two main models of revolver, and they're, they're basically the same. So the R1 and the R2, the main difference, as far as I can tell, is in the barrel. You can see a comparison. So this, the frame, the receiver, is pretty much identical, if not exactly identical. You can see one of these. I've taken the orange tip off when I haven't yet. So the the only real difference, as far as I can tell, uh, is whether you have the sort of vent red barrel or not. Um, some of them also have a slightly different grip, so there's different grip options. Some of them uh, it wraps around the front, and some of them it doesn't. Here's, here's some of the ones with a different grip. Um, these are both the, the same R2, right? Although they're a little bit different in uh, markings um, in terms of how they're labeled from, uh, if that's the R1, from, uh, from the other R2s. These are both the R2 TD, this is just the R.2. One issue I have with these, uh, with these revolvers, besides them not being available on top vent, is that they're limited on what blanks you can use. Now blank firing revolvers, they have this blockage partway through the cylinder, so you can't load full-size ammunition. So you can use 9mm PAK ammo with these, they just won't eject as easily because they don't have the rim. Most of us, why we use blank firing revolvers is because you can use half load and quarter load blanks with them, or primary only blanks. You can make it quieter. And most full load 9mm and 8mm blanks are just too darn loud uh, for most theater spaces. So what we end up wanting to use is half load. And the issue is, traditionally the way we could get those was these crimp blanks. This is what most of us think of as revolver blanks. You can see this is how a crimp blank is supposed to work, is the crimp opens up when it is fired. And the issue is that the space between the cylinder and the frame on these... Sorry, I've got my uh, Ozbot trying to track me, and when my face goes off frame it gets confused. Um, there's just not enough space so that sometimes it doesn't want to rotate freely. And it can stick. Now, I have found this... Uh, I can't get this out even. So this one, at least it sort of will turn. It just sticks a whole heck of a lot. It'll fire fine once it's lined up right. But the problem is that if you can't rotate the cylinder, you're not gonna be able to cock and fire it. Um, and so some of these crimp blanks, oh, and this one's working okay, eh, but it can't, mm, it can make it feel like it's jammed, right? It, it, it's very rare to get a jam in revolvers. Um, and there's only a couple ways in which I have seen that happen. And this is one of them, is that with these Zerakis, the cylinder gets stuck. Now compare that to, with these exact same half load blanks, the Echol Viper, which was my go-to before Zeraki. Now these are getting harder to find, unfortunately, but they were available on both front vent and top vent, um, 22 and 38. And these, cycles just fine, opens just fine. There's just a little bit more of a space in the back here of the cylinder to allow it to freely cycle compared to, I uh, can't even get this damn thing out now. I'm gonna have to get my, my mallet. 
and smack this to get it out because it just won't go. The ideal half load blanks for these Zeraki revolvers would be like these. And unfortunately though, these are really hard to find. Um, so this has the plastic crimp the same way that semi-auto blanks do, but it has the rim of a revolver blank. And these are available in half load. But unfortunately, while the Zeraki revolvers have become the most common one to find, the easiest one to find, these uh, half load revolver non-crimp blanks have not gotten easier to find. Now here's where this gets really weird is these are uh, similar models. So I mean, let's take the, uh, the R1 out for a moment. These are all Zeraki R2s. And this is the other uh, grip style I was talking about. Um, they label different things. This is an R2 TD two inches. This is R.2. Uh, this is the R2 TD three inch. Um, they should, it would appear, be all basically identical. Um, there's some cosmetic differences. I don't know if that's generational in terms of like where the logo is, the font on the Made by ATAC Arms. Um, you know, this one doesn't have that logo there. Uh, this one has some stuff on the, the cylinder, which the others generally do not. Um, but the really interesting thing is that while this R2 jams up so much with these normal crimp blanks, these two do not. Um, and I don't understand. So this to me makes me wonder, is this just a quality control issue? Um, or is this a, a design issue? Are there actually different, uh, different models of this that work fine and others that do not? Because you can see that blank revolving through the cylinder in that, right? So that's working just fine. But the same blank, and this one, a basically identical R2, same barrel length, all of that. And I can't even close the cylinder when that blank is at the top. So I can't at the bottom. There's more of a gap at the bottom than at the top. I guess they're, they're making it tighten up a bit as it goes up to the top, and that's true on all of these. You can sometimes see the gap. Yeah, the gap's a little wider at the bottom at the top. So you might load this thinking, oh, it's fine. Then your actor goes to fire it as the, the cylinder revolves and it gets to the top, then it's gonna jam up. So this is one potential jam you can have with these. And I don't know if this is an earlier generation and a later generation, and that's part of the issue that they, they changed it, or if it's just a quality control issue. I really can't tell. And that's part of why this is, is so hard to make a, a blanket statement on. I've had some conversations over the years with folks uh, about like, oh, does the, uh, does it just the R1 or is it just the R2 that jams up with the crimp blanks and, and doesn't have enough space in the cylinder to cycle those? Uh, and there's been inconsistency in uh, that conversation, and now I know why. It's because it doesn't really seem to, to make a difference whether it's an R1 or an R2. Um, it could also be uh, earlier versus later generations. I think both of these are earlier. But there were some of them that I bought at the same time where some of them worked and some of them did not. So, and, and this is already one where I can feel, there's, there's a, a, a scrape almost along the back uh, of the chamber here. Yeah, I can see a little bit of a, I wonder if that's brass residue from when I had to hammer that other one out. The other factor being that some of these crimp blanks are actually a little thicker in the lip than others. I don't know if that shows up, if I can get close enough to really see that. Um, and you don't really know when you buy them. There, there isn't an a exact dimension of how thick that is. So this one actually I think will cycle in the silver one. Yep. So that one cycles fine. But this one did not. And unfortunately uh, because of the way that these, uh, I have all these half thing, full things of blanks that come back from jobs. Um, I don't actually know what brands these were. Um, so it becomes a little bit hard to know, is this going to be a problem with this or not? Now here are some brand new ones from uh, Boland FX, um, just because I wanted to check and see some where I knew the brand, see if I could find some that I know would work. So let's see if these work in this same silver one. Verdict is, I'm going to guess no, that looks like it's sticking up a bit. Yeah. That's not going to work. So the, the Boland quarter loads will not work in that, it's that particular Zeraki. 
So they work in this one. Yeah, they work fine in this one. And this is part of why you just need to know your props. Um, is because it gets so idiosyncratic. You need to know your props, you need to test your props, and sometimes it's really hard to tell because this could just be random chance of quality control, or it could be earlier generation, more recent generation, and you think you know something, you buy another one, and then it's different. Hard to say. All right, a few more brands here. These are, I believe, the, the Western Stage props. Uh, you get them in these little bags. They're not labeled with brand or anything, so that also makes me wonder. I don't know if Western Stage props sends different blanks depending on what they can get in stock, or if they have a, a specific manufacturer they always work with. Yep, that's not wanting to close. So that's going to jam up. So at least these particular Western Stage props half loads are no go. These are Walther branded, which is a little unusual. I'm not going to find these very often. They're shiny and round. They're nice and easy looking. And these I think will work. Yeah, that goes in just fine. So if you can find these Walther 38 blanks, that will cycle okay. Unfortunately, I only have the one container of these. I don't know if they're even still making them. And again, if you can find them, these uh, Turkish uh, revolver blanks that have the plastic crimp. They're labeled 9mm slash 380R instead of 38. So confusing how they name these things. These, I believe, also will work. Yep, those cycle fine. So, of the blanks that I've got, these will work in any of the Zeraki revolvers, and all of the others apparently won't. This has me a little bit worried about the supply chain in terms of the viability of blanks in live theater. 